This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoyenberg, Camp Power, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in the Cupra Born 82 kilowatt hour with the, well, it had the kaput battery. This is going to be the third and hopefully the last episode of this uh, very long calibration process. I'm just doing it very detailed as what the importer has instructed us to do. And normally it's not needed to do this, but uh, we want to document what's happening uh, as the battery, uh, the, the BMS, uh, learns the new battery, the fixed battery. So, yeah, I have uh, finished charging to 100% actually a couple of days ago. I was busy with uh, uh, some childbirth. But now I'm uh, ready to go for another run. So you see, 100%, it claims only 69 kilowatt hour. Still nowhere near the 75 kilowatt hour. Hopefully we get more than what it claims, right? So we will just reset everything and then off we go. Another run, normal route. We are now in Hama and uh, yeah, this marks the point where we are roughly around this bridge here, zoop, where we need to slow down. Okay, all right, 110 then, okay. Okay, our consumption is 262 watt hour per kilometer, but it should drop a little bit around here. Well, what do we have here? Hmm. Well, fortunately, I'm a good boy this time. Oh, yeah. We have now reached a turnaround point, Moar. We have uh, supposedly 20% uh, back in Yesheim, okay? Let's see if that estimation is correct then. So 259 watt hour per kilometer now. Well, we're back home and then the result is this. 266 watt hour per kilometer multiplied by 225 uh, kilometers. And then we have 9.8 kilowatt hour left, so that is 90, no. 69.7 uh, kilowatt hour so we still don't have more energy than we have had before so yeah well maybe one last time i'll plug it in and see if we get more energy this thing here yeah if we get that <laughs> more energy in the morning so uh, let's see i'm getting tired now it's uh i went 128 at night new days new possibilities this is the fifth or the sixth cycle i lost count but it doesn't seem like the recent cycles has done anything so there was one guy commenting on the you know youtube comments and he claims that this is not the right way we should not follow uh, Mullers or the the importer or the dealership's recommendation or whatever they say he said that you have to deep discharge it and then let it rest for 12 hours and then charge it up until full and then let it rest for 12 hours and that's when the car learns the new min and max so maybe that's what we should do hmm run it until it well maybe not dies i'm not sure uh, or at least run it down to zero percent and then actually let it sit yeah why not let's try that and then charge it to full and let it stay for 12. okay but let's see now so Oh, we're down to 99%. It was 100% and then it dropped a little bit, but that's good enough. But let's see here. So if I do this... Choo, wait, no, 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 wrong, wrong. Uh, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Oh, ah, look at that. We still don't have 75 kilowatt hour per hour. So um, it seems like this ain't working. We have to go deep then. Okay, so today we're gonna try to discharge the battery and instead of going the normal route, I will have Amory's dad with me because we're gonna go harvesting. So normal route is usually north here. They will go south here. We're gonna go for some, uh, they call it Ramslug, which is uh, wild uh, garlic or something. Yeah. And then also maybe try to find some fiddlehead. So we have prepared with some equipment with us and then the car is at 99%. Yeah, 69 kilowatt hour, so let's just go and just discharge as much as we can now. We've been driving for almost an hour and we are still at only 84%. You see, this is why I prefer to do this on the motorway. We have traffic, we have left lane huggers, we have low speed limits and average speed is only 79 kilometers per hour. But at least we are doing something useful now. 
so uh, yeah, we're gonna enter the undersea bridge. No, I'm just kidding. The undersea tunnel uh, over. I mean, under 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 the Rebaksuna. This is the location. It 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 is actually crazy now, uh, because uh, it, they already came out lots of them. This year we had a quite uh, cold spring. It was snowing in late April, and then suddenly, boom! Warm weather, some rain, and then plenty here. You, like, Okay, I instructed how you should find this. So see, it's, uh, they call it Ramsluk in the which Oh, oh, the part, I mean, you know, I'm in here, I'm in dog, I'm in here. Oh, yeah, So the way you identify them, because there's also something that is poisonous that you should not eat. If you pick, pick the, the leaf like this, oh, oh. and then you can smell just smell it. It smells like garlic, a mix of garlic and an onion. That's it. Yeah. So this is edible. Okay. Maybe. I, and also, if well, if you dare to, you smell that that garlic uh, onion taste. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna throw that away. But okay. So now we just have to start picking. Plenty. There's already someone else harvesting it. Well, it's kind of funny. That's. The woman is harvesting, the man is sitting in the car waiting. Hmm, why don't they harvest together? Okay, and we need to wash this anyway. So even if there's a little bit of dust here, we need to wash every single leaf anyway. And this is only on this side. It, it grows the most here first because it gets the most sun. And then in, in the forest here, just walk 100 meters into the forest here. There will be plenty of this, but they grow slightly later than here. So, okay, let's uh, start digging then. Okay, I stopped the car over there. I didn't bother bringing the camera, but uh, here we have fiddleheads. So the way you identify fiddleheads is that they have a quite distinct look. Uh, this is something I, my personal opinion is that they have this wide head something that kind of resembles like a cobra head, you see. And also the poisonous ones, they have round stem with with uh, like like fur or something but these are not round they have a little u-shaped stem and also when you pick them and you smell it it has this distinct smell so this is it this is fiddlehead but this is too late you want to have them before they spring up so uh, this the area over here they get lots of sun over there also so we have to go yeah Amr's dad is in there digging for some uh, maybe not the best location but somewhere nearby here maybe but there are other fern like here that i don't know this is not the fiddlehead it's different type okay there are a few here this is one you're looking for this is almost too late you want to have it a little bit earlier you see the like look like wrapping paper so this is okay ish some of this okay ish a little bit earlier would be better but yeah so you're gonna pick a few see how it is and now we're heading back and uh, we still have 75 percent wow the consumption is only 171 watt hour per kilometer you see that when it's nice and warm outside like here 17 degrees then the consumption is not that high especially when we are only going on these uh, b roads we are back home and we are at 53 percent what we spent only half the battery yeah, consumption 171 watt hour per kilometer. We're mostly just stuck in Stau. Ah, yeah, and you see that when we are stuck in Stau, we use almost no energy. This is oh, what the heck? 0.3 kilowatt hour per hour. <sighs> okay, I need to discharge it more before we uh, go for the next step. Okay, it's been a couple of days now, and uh, I think we're ready to go deep. So. I didn't want to spend too much time driving the car back and forth, so I just kept the HVAC on. But then there is no camp mode on like a Tesla. So you have to just keep climate on for half an hour and then set up some schedule. I can show you. So we tried to bring it low without uh, driving it. The trick is that uh, I set the temperature to low. And actually, I think I used high. Yeah, this is the preheating temperature, but I'm going to set it to 21 now. I set it to high, right? And then I set up different schedules so that it will preheat several times and therefore burn energy. 
but then that preheating only works down to 19% and also if you do this the, this uh, keep climate on thing only works for half an hour but it seemed to work now but once you leave the car it will not work because we are below 20% so now I have to drive the last part to go deep then uh, okay I navigated to a 350 kilowatt fast charger but it doesn't seem like the car wants to preheat is the inlet is still uh, 13 okay so that's a bummer we just have to drive uh, like normal and try to burn some energy we are now home and this is the safest place to run out of the juice without protection because i didn't bring ecoflow and yeah we are at zero percent zero kilometer it's been like this for a little while i, I had a little uh, chat with uh, mushkus on the phone but um you see, now we are down to minus 0.6%. Uh, BMS claims to be 5.2. Yeah, this is as expected. There is a zero buffer. You see, we're pulling 1.6 kilowatt. So if we camp here long enough, uh, the contact is will open. But I just wonder how long we should discharge it and whether it's necessary to let the car sit for 12 hours because it's not healthy for the battery to stay that deep that long. So maybe I'll just uh, make my own uh, variant, which is just to plug it in now and start charging it. Because I think already by now the BMS should learn how the bottom is, right? I don't know if you guys agree, it just feels a bit wrong to let the car sit. But on the other hand, okay, even if you let the car sit now with whatever, um, it shouldn't hurt it too much because we are still at 5%, it's not 0%. There's always the buffer in case you're clumsy and you run out of juice and you're stranded for uh, overnight or some shit. It's not going to kill the battery, but of course it's not optimal, but uh, what are we supposed to do huh? to, um, uh, to try to calibrate this? More interesting. Uh, I've been looking at the remaining energy, but at least this claims that the max energy content is 74.7 kilowatt hour. Hmm, does that mean that uh, the BMS now knows the, the min and max? At least it should know the max, right? because we've been, we've been at the max several times, but we haven't been at the min too many times. So, okay, you know what? I, I think I'll just plug it in now. It's probably deep enough, yeah, minus 1%. Okay, and then I suppose you don't have to semi-slow charge it. We're going to charge it at 11 kilowatts. So uh, tomorrow morning we know the answer. This is the one we're looking for. Okay, it's so the next morning now. The car should be fully charged. So let's see, do we get 75 kilowatt hour? Well, this is promising. At 100%, we get 337 kilometer. Before, we got uh, less than 300. Uh, what? Okay. Well, still 68 only. So I wonder, was it because I didn't let the car sit at 0% for 12 hours? And then am I supposed to let the car sit at 100% for 12 hours? Well, at least in the 100% part, I don't think that matters because I look on easy and on the charging station and there is no activity. Once the car finished charging, it's done, the UN. So I have tried everything according to some fanboys and according to Mölle, the dealership and we cannot get more than around 70 kilowatt hour. So I thought this would be the uh, third and last episode, but right now I'm not sure. So I will just have to throw this car back to Mölle or, and, or uh, Marcus, who is the owner, and then we'll see what happens. But uh, do you guys uh, think this car is still okay now or is it still kaput? It's supposed to have 75 kilowatt hour. It's an 82 kilowatt hour battery and also yeah for you guys who wonder but isn't it 77 kilowatt hour when the 77 kilowatt hour is nominal in a lab when the battery is 20 degrees celsius and we are discharging at 0.5 c or something in real world when you have uphills acceleration downhills and stuff with higher c uh, discharge rates you know then you usually have more losses than what the manufacturer claim and i have measured 75 kilowatt hour actually 75.5 after those t discharging losses so anyway i think that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later